of how far I've come in the middle of all my trolling. Okay, yes, I troll. Whatever, trolling has entered the chat. Trolling is fucking fun, okay? Like, I am obsessed with being the troll queen. Like, literal trolling entered the chat. But in the- Wow. Hey, what up you guys? It is voiceover Sassy Assassin here, back with another episode of Illusion and Delusion, aka Amberlyn Reed. So in today's episode, I'm going to be reacting to risk of thyroid cancer, pancreatitis, side effects, price, slash, is Ozempic still working? So, um, I, this whole, this whole week has been really rough on me. I have a kidney infection in both my kidneys and a bladder infection and i just feel rough like seriously i have no energy i always feel nauseous the antibiotics has just been making me feel all of this and it's taking forever for the antibiotics to really make me feel better so i'm very low energy right now I hate coming on here, like literally every video is saying I'm sick with this, I'm sick with that, but I have to make peace with the fact that this is my life. I'm a chronically ill person and it comes to the territory, but um, that's pretty much all the update I have. I've just been really sick with this uh, infections. Um, but other than that, uh, I haven't seen anything of this video I'm still getting over the last video of hers what is it the episode three of it's so raw um what's to say um Amberlynn is just causing a lot of mess and there are quite a few re reactors drama channels that actually been talking about Amber um, that don't usually talk about Amber. So, you know, it, it, it's, this mess is, is pretty big and I have a feeling it's just going to get even bigger. Um, I, I just, I have this sneaking suspicion that Amber is going to take herself off Ozempic for whatever reason. I don't think this Ozempic arc is going to last for very much longer. I think she's going to come up with excuses as to why the Ozempic isn't working for her. I just, you know, I, I honestly feel with how she's been talking about Ozempic that um, she's setting herself up to fail again. Because I, I, I think it is working for her, but with the talk about of the fear of losing, basically losing her channel because of success. And that now that she actually is succeeding with her weight loss, I think she is purposely self-sabotaging. And she's now setting us up for the and herself up for the for getting off Ozempic and just so she can maintain the weight just so she can or get you know keep basically maintain the weight just so she can keep this train wreck going because she feels that the only way that she will maintain the views and the train wreck aspect is that she stays, you know, a very morbidly obese YouTuber that is basically, a, you know, an absolute wreck. And it, it, honestly, it's, it's, it's pathetic. It really is. I think, you know, I think about my life and there's so much of that, my life that is kind of pathetic being how you know being a chronically ill person is not exactly the most exciting life and it has impacted my life in such a way that's just phenomenal but um even my life such as it as it is is a lot better than hers and 
I don't have the means or the money that she has that could make my life a lot better. But the fact that I even, I may, I still managed to make my life a lot better, irregardless, is a, it's a phenomenal feat, I guess. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, is that she has, have had all the resources literally at, you know, at her disposal. And yet she is bemoaning that, and, and that, and acting like she doesn't. Acting like it's all out of the realms of her, her possibility, once again. It's like, same shit, different year. Rinse, cycle, repeat. Pretty much. But anyways, I'm going to stop talking. Um, this is 1.25. Thank God it's only 15 minutes long. So let's get to I will say, though, I do like her makeup. Her her eye look is really pretty. I'm glad that she's started doing her makeup again. Um, I always say that her 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 eyeliner is always just phenomenal. Like, it's, it's, she must have a, have a pretty steady hand to be able to, to do that the way she does. Because it's so clean cut and just perfect. But... Which is why I don't understand why it may, maybe she should become a makeup artist. You know? I don't know. What, what am I saying? Hey guys. Okay, so welcome to a new video. I figured we would do like an Ozempic video. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions involving Ozempic, if I'm still on it, how it works, and just like random things like that. So I figured I would put it into one video. I went on to Instagram today and I asked you guys to ask me a bunch of questions. Anything about Ozempic that you would like to know, just so it was easier. Okay, um, speaking of social media, and this is, she brought it up in her last video, the episode three of It's So Raw. Um, I actually thought, I, I didn't understand what her complaint was about TikTok. Because I'm not on TikTok very much, if at all. Like, I maybe have, like, three videos on there. Because it's just it's really not my thing but occasionally on those rare occasions I sometimes put a TikTok up but like when I'm but it just the the uh the the want is never there these days but nevertheless I been watching other reaction channels talk about Amber in particular this issue and I I thought for a moment she was banned from TikTok altogether, but she's only been shadow banned. And apparently, she used some slurs against another creator. I don't know who that is. Um, but that's why she's been shadow banned. She's um, been talking... She made it as if, like... Um, her like her being fat and all the fat phobia surrounding her is the reason why she was shadow banned. I didn't know what that term was until somebody like explained it on one of the the videos that I watched. But um, yeah, she's been ba she was bad mouthing a creator, and she was pretty much shadow banned. This coming from the woman who recently has been complaining about the fat phobia, about being bullied on her social media platforms, and yet she feels that she has the right to do it to others without consequence. Um, also, she wants to change the tone of her channel, right? She wants it to be a more positive place and doesn't want it to be about the hate and, you know, the the fat phobia and the bullying and whatever. And yet she's contacting reaction channels. Um, two good examples. Zachary Michael and Young Dumb Honey Bun. Um, and their Instagram DMs. Um, basically, sh you know, r shooting off her mouth at them. And they both have spe have told her, like... We don't want to interact with you anymore. Like, you know, we're not interested in having a conversation with you. So, Amber, why is it that you're contacting reaction channels if you don't want any drama, if you want nothing to do with us? 
Hmm. Just, just saying. It makes me, you know, honestly, I want to grow my channel. And, you know, I, I want to have, you know, I, I wanted this, I want this to be a profitable thing, you know, side um, thing for me. But I'm honestly glad right now that I'm not one of the well-known channels, um, reaction channels, that I've been relatively under the radar because I would be so afraid of Amber just like popping into my DMs one day, Instagram DMs, whatever, or, you know, whatever social media platform, you know, platform. I'm, I'm like, I'm mostly on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but like on any of those platforms and start like, you know, shooting the shit at me, like seriously, because I really be afraid of like shooting my own mouth because you get me fired up enough and I blow off like a rocket unfortunately and Amberlynn gets like she has a tendency sometimes to get under my skin which is why sometimes I do take a step back a little bit um I took a step back before doing this video because I didn't want to you know say anything to profane because her past couple videos have been really just ticking me off but anyways i wrote it all down there's an actual lot so let's begin so first question is are you still on ozempic yes i am still on ozempic i have been on it for about two and a half months now so it's been it's been quite a minute i'm going to use this um highlighter to highlight the questions that I answered. How much does your Ozempic cost? I've had a lot of people ask this question. Um, Ozempic without insurance or without an insurance that covers it because surprisingly there are a lot of insurances that do not cover Ozempic for weight loss. So it's like $1,200. So it is a pretty penny. There is a large portion of insurances. I'm not surprised that um, most insurances aren't like um, paying for Ozempic for the weight loss, considering it literally just came on the market for a weight loss treatment. Um, that's probably going to be something. It's probably going to pick up with insurances for that respect in the next couple years. Um, I went through something similar where, and at the time I had insurance, but through my father, and it was when I was uh first diagnosed with a lot of my stomach just dis disorders it, um i was put on this medication called zyfaxin and at the time it was still like in drug trials but it yeah it was still in drug trials so it was a little bit of a different situation but irregardless it, it was just getting out there and there literally were like no insurances that covered it. So I had to pay a lot of money for, I think it was like a pill a month, whatever. Now I'm not on it anymore. I haven't been on any like actual like medication aside from like the probiotics for a long time for uh, my stomach problems because I don't need it. But like at the time, it was like really expensive. Um, but I, so Amber, obviously, I'm confused. Is Amber, so Amber, obviously, well, I'm not confused. So Amber obviously has insurance that doesn't cover the, um, the, whatchamacallit, the Ozempic, whatever. Um, or maybe the they're only covering some of it. But see, Amber's fortunate. This is another um, aspect of her privilege that she says she so severely lacks in her life. She has the privilege to be able to afford a $1,200 medication. Now, if there was somebody out there it probably is um, a very morbidly obese person. Let's say that's can't work on benefits, and 
they didn't qualify for weight loss surgery, but they had the chance to take Ozempic, they probably would not be able to afford that option unless they changed insurances. And that takes time. Um, or maybe you'd have to put like a special, put, you know, um, come to an arrangement with your insurance company. I don't know. I've heard of certain instances where if you put an appeal in or something with your insurance company, you may, for a certain, for medication, um, you may get it pay. They may pay for it, whatever. Um, depending on the, the, the person's income and like the the condition and the severity of the condition but i could imagine that, that there are probably a lot of very morbidly obese people out there like amber probably bigger that want to be on ozempic but are on benefits and can't afford the ozempic so once again i'll go back to the fact that i feel like amber is setting us up to um for the failure of ozempic because she has been not so subtly saying that it doesn't feel like it's working as much um and i feel like she's gonna you know she's gonna find some way to get off the ozempic and she and she'll come up with some bullshit excuse but she probably doesn't keep in mind that there are a lot of people out there without the money and the means um that need that medication and so i know i'm judging too soon but it's just like i've been watching you know reacting to amber watching and reacting to amber for since 2019 so i feel like i've you know i've been in the girl amber lynn verse for long enough now to know her patterns and i i see this coming a mile away so if it doesn't happen and i'm wrong then I'm wrong and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope she stays on it and continues to work with a doctor to find a g better dose to for her you know, for it to help her. But I think also a part of it is just the fact that um a lot of it is also due to proper diet and exercise. E you know, exercise does um right raise the metabolism the right type of exercise does raise the metabolism you know make it quicker fat you know so you're burning those calories so if amber would just exercise more um actually make an effort to exercise um, i think she would see uh, a more improvement but let's keep let's be on i mean let's you know, be honest here. Amber has actually lost quite a bit of weight off of Ozempic. At this point, she's actually lost more weight off the Ozempic than she has on the Ozempic. So, I don't know what, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think at this point. I, ha I have mixed feelings, but that, I, let's just say it is my theory. What I just presented to you is my theory that only make you pay $25 and they pay the rest. Unfortunately, not mine. Someone asked, does it affect my energy levels? And yes, I noticed from taking Ozempic that I am a lot more tired and I don't feel as energized. And I know a lot of other people who take Ozempic also experience the same thing, which is also tied together with insomnia. When she says she knows a lot of other people that take Ozempic, like, I feel like it's more figurative. I feel, I feel like she just reads, like maybe reviews on the drug i don't know but it's just like she always talks like oh i know all these people and it's just like who are these people like seriously i know amber lynn is a relatively well-known youtuber and, I, and i'm sure there are a lot of very morbidly obese people that watch her but it's just like you never really see those people you know in the comments on her, you know, Instagram. It's just like, who who are these people that you know? It's like how she always says, well, all these people in my DMs, like, are, you know, says, I sh you know, they like this and they like that. Well, I just don't believe it. I really don't. 
you know, like she says she knows all these people and it's just like, who? Like, who are these people? Yeah, um, it has made my insomnia a lot worse. So my sleeping and just like being tired, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Like I'm tired, but I can't sleep. Ma'am, make up your mind. So a lot um, of you asked, what are the- Amber, you've had this problem even before the Ozempic. And I will say this emphatically, you have sleep apnea. You have been told that you have sleep apnea. Just because you lose 100 pounds- doesn't mean that the sleep apnea goes away at your weight. I still firmly believe that you have sleep apnea. And just because you can sleep laying down like a normal person doesn't mean you don't have sleep apnea. My dad has sleep apnea and he can sleep, you know, he's always been able to sleep laying down. He's never had to sleep sitting up, but he has sleep apnea. There are people that, um, somebody at his work, um, who is thin as a rake, but had sleep apnea. Sleep apnea isn't just a morbidly obese person's problem, but at the same time, it's very common for people who are very morbidly obese over time to develop sleep apnea. Just like how it is for people who have diabetes it's very much more is very common for morbidly obese people to have diabetes but sometimes they don't you know i'm one of those fortunate people that doesn't have um diabetes but i've been close to pre-diabetic before so but that but i, I never hit the diet pre even pre-diabetic mark side effects that i experience and as of lately it's just like the insomnia, the low energy, just feeling kind of sluggish throughout the day. I get constipation mixed with sometimes diarrhea, uh, TMI. It is what it is. I honestly and people am saying it. If you were in the comment section of this video, because I did see comments say, so I do. I do know that she mentioned the diarrhea and the constipation which is it and it's just like it's not an either or it doesn't have to be either or like you can have constipation and then diarrhea just take it from a person who has ibs colitis and gastroparesis it's a thing like you can have one minute you can be severely constipated and then the next minute you can have diarrhea like it's oh, the weirdest thing but it, it, it happens I don't really have that many side effects. Which brings me to the next question is, does it make me nauseous? It makes so many people nauseous, even to the point of throwing up. But I can say that the only time I was ever nauseous from it was the first couple of weeks that I took it. I, I don't feel sick from it at all. I also know it helps a lot of people with their appetite because they're nauseous and they feel sick, which makes them not want to eat. And I'm not going to lie. I was kind of looking forward to that aspect. As much as I hate being nauseous, I hate being fat more. So I was like, oh my God, well, I could be nauseous all the time and not eat. Unfortunately, I did not get that symptom. I know that's like a negative way of thinking and like a really weird way of thinking, but I'm just being brutally honest. Um, I would love for this medicine to like work as best as it can for me. What dose am I currently taking? So you start at 0.25, the highest you can go is 2.4, I'm pretty sure, and I'm currently on one. So I've been taking one milligram for I think two to three weeks now. Um, I mean, I haven't noticed any drastic changes, which is unfortunate because one milligram is when it's supposed to like really be doing its damn thing. And it's like, it's not. Maybe you're not doing your damn thing. Maybe you're slacking on your diet. You're not getting enough exercise, Amber. I mean, you're pretty much just sitting around and now your excuse is, well, I, 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 ha I sprained my ankle. Like it's been almost a month since she sprained her her poor little dainty ankle and it's like dude it's a glorified sprained ankle yeah you can tear ligaments with a sprained ankle d depending on the grade that it is um you may have to have surgery on it um but still it's like amber you have the option to get physical therapy for this Okay. And I bet you it, any good doctor with their salt 
would suggest physical therapy. It's not as if you you're if you have insurance, it's not as if your insurance wouldn't cover it. Well, I don't know. I don't know what her insurance is, but um so it's like even if you didn't have your insurance didn't cover the physical therapy, um you'd still be able to afford it. So one, you know, begs the question why you haven't pursued that. Do you see how easily she gave in to the not being physical? She was just waiting for a fucking excuse. And now that's going to be her thing. Well, I can't, you know, exercise because I sprained my ankle and it still bothers me. She could have a little twinge from it from now and then. She'll use that as an excuse to not get up and exercise. It's so fucking pathetic. Someone asked. It begs the question what the hell she would do with a even greater physical injury. Like, you know, she's been through the, the, the whole hysterectomy. Like, yeah, that was probably painful. But I feel like with the hysterectomy, she was more active with that than this glorified sprained ankle. Like, she was getting up moving around, apparently, allegedly, when she had this. And now it's just like, ooh, I have a slightly sprained ankle, you know, a uh, glorified, maybe not so, you know, somewhat painful sprained ankle. Oh, now I'm bed bound. She was less bed bound when uh, allegedly when she had the hysterectomy i don't know i mean i don't know if that's true i mean she made it i remember she made it as like she was you know always moving around and stuff but like you know who knows right how long do you have to stay on ozempic and that is just purely up to you how it works for you what your doctor thinks etc i know it's different for everyone which brings me to the next question is when do you plan on stopping ozempic i'm gonna stop it if it ever causes me any medical problems i notice it not working uh if i reach my goal weight yeah right um so those are like the main reasons honestly so as of right she now there is no stopping it in my way. near that's, future i don't see myself stopping that's that telling. So continuing with one milligram for several more weeks because i know for one i'm not ready to increase my dose which brings me to the next question so when i was talking about i was like afraid to increase my dosage to go up to one milligram people were asking why are you not following the ozempic increase instructions that question confused me i'm not gonna lie because there is no one size fits all instructions for taking ozempic especially for weight loss everyone is different there are people who stay on 0.25 milligrams for months because it works for them there's people who are on 0.5 milligram for one week and then they go back to 0.25 or people who honestly start at 0.5 you have to listen to your doctor and what my doctor told me is if you feel like you want to increase it you can you have that option now but you don't have to i was afraid to increase it to one milligram especially which brings me to my next question why are you scared to increase ozempic so something that can happen but uh with taking ozempic is you can get pancreatitis and or pancreatitis i don't know how to pronounce it so with Ozempic, you can get pancreatitis. <laughs> if I'm saying that wrong, just ignore me, please. Um, and I have had pancreas. <laughs> I hate that word. I'm just going to say pancreas problems for the sake of like embarrassing myself. I've had pancreas problems in the past. It was actually when I lived in Virginia and I had them. I had it because of my gallstones. And so by increasing Ozempic, I am increasing the chance of having pancreas problems what i don't understand is she's it was able to have the hysterectomy full hysterectomy okay and get through it fine so what i don't understand why she isn't pursuing getting the gallstones out that's a less invasive surgery i should know i've had my goals i my, well, i've had my gallbladder out because you they would probably have to take her gallbladder So I don't get it. Like, that would solve all your problems right there. It can't be pleasant to have those gallstones sitting there for years.
my doctor told me if you have any of these symptoms stop taking it so I did notice it was a couple weeks ago I had a little moment a little scare that I did not share with you guys where I was having some of the symptoms where you know she was like you need to stop taking it if this happens if this happens more than once etc etc it didn't last long it was like a couple hours since then I have not had any issues and this also brings me to the next question I feel like all these questions kind of like blend together which works perfectly how often does your doctor that prescribed it check in with you about how it is working she's very like prompt with that um so it's as often as i like like i can schedule an appointment to talk to her about it even like the nurse that i see when i go see the doctor um she's also on it and she's like asking like so how are you doing on it like they just seem very friendly there like even the receptionist is like asking how i'm doing on it and stuff so next question is how did you go about getting prescribed so when i went to see my doctor um i brought up like i I want help with weight loss normally like I want them to bring it up first but nine times out of ten it doesn't really happen but this doctor seemed like I she actually really cared I'm sorry but picture this Sicily um a 500 pounder goes into a doctor's office for and they're not going to mention weight loss I'm sorry you know whenever I see a new doctor be be no matter what's primary care or what specialist my weight is always brought up and i'm like literally at this point over a hundred pounds like less than she is okay like way over a hundred pounds maybe 200 pounds this one i don't know um i don't know i but um so I have a hard time believing that they would not mention it. I just... I said, mm -mm. So she was like, she gave me a pamphlet for like weight loss surgery. And then she told me a bunch of like things that I could take um, to lose weight. And one of them was Ozempic. And the minute I heard that, I was like, I've heard so many good things about this medicine. So that is the one that I chose because there was like multiple that I could have chosen from. The way that she also described it is that this one does do the best on the body um it's not as many symptoms or bad symptoms like because i've taken fentramine and let me tell you it was not pretty it was not good i absolutely hated it next question is would i recommend ozempic and yes i would recommend ozempic but again talk to your doctor if you are interested in losing weight you've had trouble doing it yourself and you want to see if a certain tool will work for you yes talk to your doctor i have gotten so many people asking like are you worried about thyroid cancer because ozempic causes thyroid cancer I have gotten this a lot. I can happily tell you that Ozempic has never given a human being thyroid cancer. Ozempic has only ever given rodents thyroid cancer and it's only happened a couple times. Um, I appreciate the concern because I have had cancer in the past, but it's like lunch meat can also give me cancer. I can get cancer just for literally no reason, but um, it's only- Why would people say that they've heard that people get See, I wonder if she really knows what she's talking about. I'm going to have to research this because, um, I don't know. I've only been rodents who have gotten cancer. I feel like it's important that we get out full facts instead of just half facts because someone seeing that type of comment in my comment section or hearing people talk about it if they don't have like the full information then it could scare them out of not taking it and i don't want anyone to like be scared out of not taking it because it could change your life is there anything you wish you knew before starting ozempic i kind of wish i i don't know i went into it as like oh my god it's gonna be like a magic pill it's gonna like change my life it's really gonna work it doesn't yeah, i knew i i knew it i knew she was gonna come around to saying that that this magic pill that was gonna solve all her problems Fuck you, Amber. Really, Amber? That's why, that's why you haven't been putting in the work? Because you thought, oh, I'm going to Ozempic now, so that's going to solve all my problems. So the whole, you know, spiel that she, you know, spat at us in the beginning when she started taking it about, you know, um, being inspired to eat right and to exercise, that all was a bunch of crap, right? And it doesn't work every week and it's challenging and you're gonna get for me i have gotten so freaking frustrated when i notice that it's not working and i know there's no such thing as a magic pill because this is literally just a tool but it's like i thought this tool was gonna work more for me and 
it's just it's not mm. working in the way that I thought it was going to which is fine people were asking how much does the injection hurt it doesn't actually hurt there is just like a little tiny sting moment like you have to stick it in and then you count to six and I would say usually around like three four is when it starts to like it feels like a tiny little bee sting I guess you could call it but that feeling goes away within like a second so it doesn't like hurt at all how does your binging episodes correlate with when you take the shot on Monday. That question and then also how often do you get the injection? I, I take it once a week on Mondays. So my binging correlation is I binge less on Tuesdays. So when I take Ozempic, I notice that it works the very best on Tuesday. And then it's like by Thursday, I am ready to just eat the whole house. Um, it's unfortunate. It doesn't even last the whole week. I wouldn't even say that it curbs my appetite. I don't really know how to explain it. This experience has been really different because like, I'm still hungry. I still want to binge. I still have to tell myself no. I almost feel like I'm doing like a placebo effect at this point where it's just like, I feel like, okay, I took my injection. So that means it's working because it's not like it's like physically taking away my hunger, but I just do notice I do better with my eating realistically monday through wednesday slash thursday someone asked is ozempic changing your mood i don't notice any mood changes no what's the biggest difference you've noticed since being on the shot i don't notice absolutely anything like i think the biggest difference is just like my um boo boo in the kitchen like i'm not really a constipated gal but the injection you know it has its moments so i would say that is the biggest thing i've noticed honestly what do you think has had a larger impact on your weight loss your personal efforts or the ozempic absolutely my personal efforts because i have lost drastically more off of ozempic versus on ozempic which is true yeah and but now it's like you're not even active i mean how are your eating habits like and I've she won't even tell us what her weight noticed, is. Notice, honestly, especially in the last little bit of time, that any weight loss that I do have, I can't blame it on Ozempic because I feel like it's not really taking away my appetite like it should. You know, I'm still overeating and binging, which brings me to the next question. Why are you still overeating on Ozempic? Because Ozempic is not a magic pill. It's not a magic injection. I feel like a lot of people think that I'm just supposed to magically lose weight because actually the person who said, why are you still overeating on Ozempic also decided to say along with it, it doesn't make sense. Like how could you have a valid reason for this? Because Ozempic doesn't just take away my 31 years of binging. It doesn't just, it just hasn't. I don't. Okay. So at least she acknowledges that then that, that because for a moment there, it's confusing because she, she's like, oh, I thought I was going to be this magic pill, whatever, that, you know, helped me lose weight. But then, uh, no, maybe I just interpreted it wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Like, this isn't a magic situation type deal. Like, I know what the things I'm saying right now, it sounds very like, okay, is Ozempic even working for you then? I ask myself that all the time, um, especially as of lately, because like once I took the one milligram, I was expecting like a big change because I officially doubled my dosage quadrupled my dosage since the beginning so i was expecting you maybe know, you waited too long maybe that's it maybe she because she waited too long to do the the upgrade i don't know i don't know enough about this medication to really say say much so changes and there is none, but that doesn't mean I don't recommend it. Doesn't mean I don't like it. Doesn't mean I want to stop it because it's like, I believe that maybe once I do go up to 1.5 milligrams, that that'll be my perfect sweet spot because there is a sweet spot for everybody. And I just don't think I found mine yet. So the last question is I'm on Ozempic, but I haven't lost any weight. Why is that? Because sadly, Ozempic does not work for everybody. And I think that a lot of people have success on it like i have lost weight on ozempic but i mean i've been losing weight for over a year now so it's not like it was just ozempic it'd be different if like i hadn't had already lost over 80 pounds and then i started ozempic and then all of a sudden i was losing weight i've been losing weight in the beginning ozempic did give me a little a little boost if you will especially the first two to three weeks i would say and now it's just like, you know, I'm just chilling. I'm waiting for it to start working again. Um, but I would say if you have not lost anything, you might not have found the right dosage for you. You definitely need to talk to your doctor and Ozempic just might not work for you. Um, there's other medicines to take. I know there's one called Manjaro that a lot of people are talking about that they say actually works better than Ozempic. So that is something that is even still on my mind. It's like, okay, if Ozempic doesn't work for me, there's always something else. Don't let anyone tell you that taking Ozempic is cheating weight loss or anything like that, because that's like taking an antidepressant and saying that you're cheating depression. Ma'am, 
That's like using a hammer and saying, you know, you could have just put that nail in with your hand. Sometimes you just need an extra little oomph, a little tool to help you, if you will. Especially if you're changing your life. Like if people quit smoking, sometimes they use a nicotine patch or they use nicotine gum. That's not cheating. You're just, it's just help. That's all it is. Anyways, I'm rambling. I'm sure there's a lot that I missed that you guys have been curious about. So maybe there'll be a future of Zempic situation type deal. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. All right, so the, I'm I'm pretty much done. Like I don't have really anything else to say, um, other than this. Uh, I unpopular opinion maybe because there has been some backlash, but I you know when I woke up today, I woke up a little late because you know I haven't been feeling myself. So I saw that French fried girl actually went to the Chantel, like, the fashion show. At first, I was, and I saw the picture of Chantel and French Fried Girl and Pete's all together. It kind of, like, threw me. <laughs> I thought it was photoshopped at first. Um, I don't dive much into the Chantel verse. Um, but I saw you know, the street, the footage and everything and, and, you know, um, French Fried Girl's footage and, and, and all that stuff. And honestly, I'm living for it. Okay. I know it's like, to some degree, it's just, <sighs> some would say it's cow tipping, right? Honestly, it's a, it's a li live event. It's in her city. Like, it's not as if she's, like, literally stalking her. You know what I mean? Like, this is... Anybody could have gone, you know? Um, so... I, I, I don't... I'm not, I'm not discriminating against it. I thought... I, I lived for it. I was like, this is... This is great. I love it. Like, and I will say that she looks massively bigger on Frenchie's cam than she does on her live stream. So it further proves that Chantel is using a hell of a lot of filters and um, programs to literally make herself look smaller. But Frenchie did say she does look smaller than the front than by the side. So it's like, you know, she has quite a belly on her. Um, She's very oddly shaped, just like myself. But um, I, I, I don't have any. I don't find any like any problem with, um, with friend with uh Frenchie going to, <laughs> to the fashion show. But I was expecting something a lot more than what it was. Like there was barely anybody there. It was very like, just very. <laughs> A very just uh, cheap fashion show, but you know what though? I will say this. Um, I'm 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 proud. I, I'm proud of Chantel for doing it because it's the first thing that she's done that does not involve Koki in a long time, and you can tell she was enjoying herself and living for it. She looked okay in the clothes, not my kind of style, but like. Um, the clothes properly fit her. Like, they were fitted for, you know, for her body type. And, uh, I mean, from what Frenchie said, it was, and because Chantel was like, ooh, I like some of the clothes on the other girls, but we all know that, but, but Frenchie said that a lot of the clothes were fitted for the different body types that were shown at the fashion show. So, it's like, you know, Chantel, you wouldn't have looked good in that because it's, wasn't fitted for you like um but i just didn't i wasn't a very big fan of the, the fashion it's just not my my thing but it is for a lot of other people so it's like um you know whatever but Chantal looked okay like she looked pretty good in the clothes that um she wore because like i said they actually fit her properly and it's like, I hope she takes inspiration from that and sees that this is what you look like when 
when you shop when you wear proper clothes like you see you can look a lot better when you're wearing clothes properly um but i think it was just so hilarious that frenchie was there with her friend whatever and apparently chantelle lost her shit whatever and i could see like that she like because when chantelle like would reach the air like come closer to Frenchie, like, she'd be mouthing off to her. And I thought that was so funny. Like, oh, man, to be there. <laughs> I mean, it's like, that shit broke the internet. Like, oh, my God. Um, But that's, that's all I gotta say about that. I just thought it was pretty funny. Anywho, um... Like, share, subscribe, comment below, hit the notification bell if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video or any of the videos I've made so far on this platform. Please feel free to leave a comment below or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. If you guys want to help me and my channel out, I do have a PayPal. I do have a Cash App. And I just want to say that there was a YouTuber that recently donated $100 to my PayPal and... um. Let's just say it shocked me, <laughs> um, and I really appreciate it. I don't know if you want me to like s s t say your your um, YouTube name, so I'll just not for now. But if you're okay with it, then you know later on I'll I'll acknowledge you by your YouTube name. Um, but I really appreciate it. It has really helped, especially this week because um, our bank messed around with the money okay and they've done this before and we're like we're just like literally thinking about changing banks because it's gotten to a point where it's happened so many times where they take money out and then put it back in take it out put it back in and we never know like like what our actual balance is because like literally one minute it's this and one minute it's that so it's like it's always left us short and just un un unsure so we're currently looking for a good bank okay but the the money that was given has really helped and it's gonna help see us through t till the next paycheck which is on the first so um i'm just so eternally grateful so eternally grateful um but it i i feel bad for um because it was like bef when before the donation this this person would like try to like Donate like 13 days before and I'm like and I'm just like oh my god I didn't see this comment for that long here's the deal with the YouTube comments if you don't get um a you know like you make a leave a comment and you don't get a response for a while it's not that I'm ignoring you it's that I don't see it for some odd reason, even if I go into studio and go to comments, not all of them show up. And I don't know why. I've talked to YouTube about this, and it's like they cannot give me like a a solid response on that because it's it's very irritating to to deal with that because it's just like, you know, I want to be able to interact with my audience. Like what the hell? So don't, you know, um don't be like discouraged or anything like that. I'm not ignoring you. It's just, I may not see it. It may not show up for whatever reason. So, um, there you go. All right. I will see you guys next time and, um, peace out my ninjas.